The last keynote this morning um, is also from a vendor, um, also looking at the cloud and identities, but um, I think putting it a little bit in a larger context and to bring all the different ends together that we have seen in the last three days. Please welcome Luca Martelli and Christian Patrasco. <laughs> So you're with Oracle, right? Sure. Uh, so can you give us uh, very short information about your role at Oracle? So you're, I think you're an identity management expert, are you a security guy, is that right? Kind of right. So I'm part of the development group. I joined Oracle 2001. Actually, it's my ninth Kuppinger event this year. Okay. And I'm uh, the local representative of the Identity Access Management Development Organization here in Europe, Middle East, and Africa. I'm not only looking after IDM, also parts of Fusion Middleware and IoT. Okay. And on my side, I take care of identity and access management too, from a business development perspective, especially related to the digital theme, so ah, which is really okay. the, the topic uh, today, actually, to understand the role of identity into the digital transformation that we are you know, facing, seeing, and sometimes is contributing to, to happen, actually. Okay. So you actually trying to do what I said, putting it in a larger context. The floor is yours. Thank you, Sasha. Great. Fantastic. So our story today has three parts. One, we would like to give you an overview. What are the four fundamental trends, or later as we call them, forces in the area of identity access management? Second, and this is the part that Luca will put emphasis on, digital. And the topic of today was evolution or revolution. And in this conference, we heard a lot the word digital transformation, which kind of stands for evolution, but we hardly heard the term digital disruption, which is kind of more a revolution. So we're going to seek out what this term digital disruption means and how identity plays a major role in digital disruption. And then we're going to show two customer videos, uh, how two customers of ours successfully implemented a digital strategy in their enterprise. But before we start, we would like to take you on a journey. We would like to explain, first of all, why the universe exists. And humbly speaking, we need to leave a little IDM away out of this equation. And what we're going to explain here are the four fundamental forces of physics that are out there, out there and might have created the universe. Force number one, gravitation. While we all know that the universe is expanding, gravitation is the counter force that pulls things together, like the Earth is rotating amongst the Sun, which is caused by the force of gravity. But also another example is the apple falling from the tree on the Earth, given gravitation as explained by Newton. It's also very easy to explain if you think about stepping on a trampoline with your mass and you're carving an inclination, the tissue of the trampoline, and now roll a ball in the trampoline and it will curve amongst the mass. The more you, you wait, the more you incline or the more you curve the trampoline, the faster this ball will get to you, which is also something that is caused by gravitation. So this is the first force. The second is electromagnetism. And to keep it really simple, it's a mixture of electricity and magnetism. And even more simple, if electrons are moving, we see this force. Perhaps that was a little too simply explained, but if electrons are in motion, they also create a magnetic field. So you see this force everywhere. You see it in light, in lightning. You even see without this force, there would be no engines, no network, no IT, and hence also no identity management. So a very important force to bring to the table. Now we're getting smaller, very tiny, and really a fraction of what we can see. We're going inside the nucleus of an atom. 
And in the nucleus of an atom, you have protons and neutrons. And you know what? Protons are positively charged. And we all learned in physics that if something is positively charged, it should repel, it should not attract each other. But still, there is a force, a very strong force, which keeps the atoms together. And this is what we call the strong nuclear force. And we know how it's one of the it is the strongest force, and we unfortunately know how strong this force is in an atomic explosion, where uranium nucleus are turned apart, and this is the energy. Well, also radiation, gamma rays are also, which are not very healthy, brought, brought to air, but this is the force that is behind this, the strong nuclear force. And the last one is the weak nuclear force, and this is very hard to explain. But a good example is what happens in the sun, where you have hydrogen reacting to helium, five, four, uh, four hydrogen uh, atoms reacting to helium, but in addition, also radiation, which comes to Earth, which gives warmth, we see the sun shining, and lets the Earth flourish. Why am I pitching this? There are two very important things to this. Every force has its reasons of existence. Without gravitation, there would be no stars, no planets, nothing that could pull the energy together. This is very important. Without electromagnetism and the strong nuclear force, if those suddenly would disappear now, while I speak, I would be vanishing, or better, I would just simply dissolve. The second thing, what is also very important, is physicists have not found this out yet. And Einstein also, during his last uh, days of living, he tried to find this grand unified theory that explains all the other four forces. It's not yet found, this theory of everything, and now we're going to make the analogy to the topic today and see if we have found in the topic today this theory of everything. So let's have a quick look at the four, I'm going to call it now, the fundamental forces of identity access management. Trends, the analogy trends that we do see in the market. Number one, mobile. And this trend or force started about four or five years ago with people bringing their own devices in the enterprise. And IT suddenly losing control. People with their personal devices were doing emails, were doing corporate files. And IT wanted to gain that control back. MDM, mobile device management, was the first iteration to deal with that force. But it just restricted the phone. So what also came to the picture is a way how to restrict, not only to restrict the phone, but also to differentiate what is business-related and what is personal. This is what we call mobile application management. But this is strong, is a lot bigger, because this is not only about mobile security. Mobility also means having a framework in place how you can develop mobile apps, deploying those mobile apps on Android and iOS. It also means, this is also very important, integration. So yes, you can build your cool apps, but at one point of time, to really add value to your business, you need to integrate your systems, especially in a B2B use case. So this is not only about mobile security. Here, the picture is bigger. The second is social. And I would like to share an anecdote with you <clears throat> about social how we as Oracle mispositioned the value of social once this came up. We're having customer advisory boards where we show customer functionality early before the functionality gets out to the market. And social, we showed to the customer around about five years ago, but we just showed the integration or the authentication via Facebook and Google. And you know what customer told us? This is great. But in a B2B sense, we don't need it. We will never trust Facebook and Google. We fully misposition the value of this force. This is about loosely coupled integration. If your customers are on Google or Facebook, you want a loosely coupled integration to your portal. You want to know what those customers are doing. And if they want to consume more services, you still have the possibility of a sec second factor authentication. Great force and also a great use case that we'll share later on, how this force was beautifully used. Cloud. 
Cloud, there's two parts to that. First of all, enabling the cloud. A simple example, you all know the Oracle Cloud. The Oracle Cloud is also powered by Oracle IDM. Oracle and IDM being an enabler of the Oracle Cloud. The second use case is putting IDM functionality in the cloud. So not deploying any more IDM on-premise, having this deployment done in a multi-tenant fashion in the cloud. And the last forces, and I'm very happy to see that in this conference we talked a lot about it, it's Internet of Things. Great use cases that we see out in the market. Connected vehicles, we showed a use case actually last year at the European Identity Conference. Uh, smart metering, we're going to show a use case later. It's already there. Now, coming back to the analogy that we had with the universe and the four forces, something is also fundamentally important here. First point is, we call it extension. Think about it this way. Single sign-on, you already have delivered on-prem. Now the force of mobile comes, you also want to deliver single sign-on on mobile. You want to de deliver single sign-on on cloud. You should not be replicating functions. You should be in a position to simply extend what you already have on-premise to the new forces or whatever comes next. It's not only about feature and functions extension, it's also about the rule set. So you already defined your rule set, your policies on premise, you want to leverage this. Mobile, you want to leverage this for social, you want to leverage this for the cloud. This is what we're heavily investing from an Oracle perspective, this extension, because the world, it will be hybrid. You will never be throwing everything away that you have on premise and then move to the cloud. And one point of time, you guys need to extend. And the second, I want to lead to Luca's topic, but it's a mixture. Mixing, extending, and mixing. Mixing these forces will bring you to something that we call digital disruption. And by all means, we as Oracle, we're also mixing these forces. Mobiles, all, all these forces are already available. Mobile and social is already mixed. I really thought about perhaps putting it as one force. But also what will come in the future, cloud and IoT. In summer, we're going to bring to the market an IoT cloud service. In autumn, a mobile cloud service. Until the end of the year, 16 cloud service just in the area of middleware, what we call platform as a service. So also we as a vendor heavily are looking into mixing these fundamental forces. And why are we doing this? The reason behind its evolution or revolution, but also to enable you as a customer to go to this notion of digital disruption. And I would like to ask Luca to tell us what this is about. Thank you, Christian. So very pleased to be here. My side, first time for me here, actually. And uh, I feel like to be in the right place to talk not just about identity management, but actually which is the role of identity management into the digital transformation. Uh, I think that five years ago, our job as an identity professional was really to find out that spot into all the projects or try to convince someone that identity was a key part of you know, the next business initiative. Now it's the other way around in many cases, hopefully. They are reaching us, asking you know, why uh, we don't have identity-enabled applications sometimes. But it's, again, important to understand why and which is the role of identity into the digital transformation and disruption. To do that, I will do, a step in, I will do three steps, actually, with you. I would like to do a small journey, taking a look to the past. So everything started, you know, uh, put yourself ten, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. We, you were maybe downloading. I was downloading, maybe, I don't know, some MP3s uh, for, through peer-to-peer -peer networking, publishing that anonymously on some networking you know, uh, website to have someone else to have that access to. What is happening now to the record industry? Bottom line, you had Apple coming in, for example, allowing people to download you know, in a legal way and to buy also the songs. And today, you have services like Spotify, which is actually allowing you, as your identity, social connected via your mobile to listen to the music you want. You can share it if you want, with your friends, and you're receiving suggestions based of that. 
we are into this kind of disruption actually today, and we as a consumer, as an end user, we are actually facing the same situation with, with other kind of business. Think about the web publishing. So we are receiving content that we like digitally, subscription-based, for example. Think about the disruption that happened to the postal service. We are using it. We are part of the digital transformation and disruption. It's really changing the business model. Things are done at the customer. It's went through the email, and now they are talking about you know, how to secure this kind of stuff more and more. Think about the photo and Kodak, for example. What happened to Kodak just a couple of years ago because of the digital innovation and disruption? So you are taking pictures with your phone based on the GPS location, for example, and you're sharing it. You're keeping it. You're archiving it and maybe using that in, that in some here. And that's really identity related. Again, I don't want to spend too much time on that, but it's moving to the money, real stuff. So uh, think about the new digital money, which is upcoming. In all these kind of situation, which are coming from the past, it's not just today, identity is the key thread, actually, which is uh, driving new services to, to, to the community and to the end user. So let's continue our small journey, and let's have a look to the future. Actually, this is already happening, but I want to talk to you a story about Proteus. This is an American company. It's uh, into the uh, medical sector, uh, let's say, and they are doing uh, researches and uh, drug testing, actually, drug trials. They had the approval last year to uh, commercialize these pills, actually, these ingestible pills, which is activated into your stomach because of organic activators, and it's allowing them to collect information from your body as being part of this you know, medical trial activity, and it's communicating with a patch with containing a sensor which is on your skin, or if you want, into your skin, but a few of them are actually going with that. And that's, 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 that patch is talking to a mobile device which is collecting the information and sending them directly to Proteus or customer of Proteus for analyzing the information and providing suggestions about how to exactly manage the doses of the medicine you have to take, especially for you know, uh, this kind of uh, research they are doing, actually, on new medicine, actually. Is it identity related? Yes, for sure. Is it identity fundamental from day zero, maybe from that day main minus one in the initiative? For sure. And, uh, that's why, for example, Oracle decided to invest from a stock perspective. So we are stock owner of this company for a small amount of money, because this is actually the digital disruption, which is bringing to the digital medicine. So another kind of innovation. Is it the future? More or less, but it's also happening today. We thought about, uh, you know, uh, many, many kinds of... Uh, Christine was talking about social uh, thing, social enabling. Uh, you know, uh, communication and uh, uh, identification. There is another interesting trend which is happening now in Europe, in the European Union, actually, which is, uh, I call it the digital identity provider economy. I, I, I bring in one, just one example, which is coming from UK. So the government of UK put together an interesting project, which is, uh, objective is to allow you as a citizen, as a consumer, as a digital identity, to access the government services through your trusted identity provider. Could be your bank, could be your post office, could be your telco company. You can select who is your trusted identity provider. Is it social login? No, it's not. It's different. But it's really done by the European Commission, not just by, by the government of UK, to enable the digital market, to enable the digital transformation actually into the market. So we, as identity management professionals, are really part of this kind of transformation. And by the way, this is not just happening in Europe. This is happening in the United States. There is a pilot right now running on this kind of initiative. And by the way, uh, there are also active initiatives in France and in Italy because of this EIDAS regulation which is coming up in Europe, which is exactly having the objective of having me, like a former student of the University of Bologna, to be able to subscribe, for example, to an executive MBA of the University of Munich just with my University of Bologna identity. Is it business-related? For sure. Is it simplifying and connecting things absolutely and, and processes? Yes. Is it happening because of there is the identity enabler for that? So that's our part. That's our job today, actually, I think, into the, into the, into the you know, a transformation business of, of identity. The big problem sometimes, I think, in, in, in our organization when we are having talks uh, you know, with the business is uh, 
to explain sometimes and to remind which is the strategic role of identity in this area. And the, the second question usually is, but is there a digital identity or a digital architecture? You know, uh, sorry, is there an architecture for digital identity? And the answer for sure is no, because it's something which is continuously evolving and really depending on the specific case. But I think that we could highlight at least three things. First of all, there is one big topic uh, which is changing the identity world, which is the relationship between people and devices. By now, the identity management projects are usually very focused on identity, but we have to put them together. From now, if we want to enable, you know, the adoption of devices and the adoption of the IoT, actually. Secondly, you know, there is the uh, possibility for us to enable rapid deployment of the applications, providing secure services through, for example, API services that's actually allowing people to develop fast application reusing what they already have in a secure way and in a, a let's say identity aware way then there is the data actually uh, consumer identity is the reason for which the marketing organization is doing many new business initiatives what do we have to do about that yes we have to take care about the data the data in transit from the device from the iot device for example to my api and at the same time also the data that we store 76 percent according to verizon of the data breaches are happening because passwords have been stolen we are still having that issue so with that kind of blocker are we going to go to the next step so we really need to have this kind of conversation. And this is actually something that I'm having, not just with the CIO, sometimes also with the CDO, the chief digital officer, the, G the chief risk officer, new kind of figures which are helping us in this way. And sometimes, you know, I have to remind that since business is really driven thing, driving, driving things, uh, which is the, you know, uh, money behind the digital security market. This is not the, the money that, you know, uh, the security company are making. This is the black market about digital, uh, you know, crime somehow. As, as you can see, it's really higher than, you know, for example, the cocaine market or whatever it is. So that, that's a big reason that we, I think we have to share within our company to, to our peers and those guys to remind how much security in the digital economy is really making that trust which is needed to have the next step and continue to have success on that business initiative with your customer, actually. So I'm, I'm just you know, referring here to Warren Buffett, which said trust is like the air we breathe. Actually you feel that you don't have hair when you're just missing it. So I'm using this slide usually for opening a conversation with a chief, chief marketing officer, but I think it's something that we could use uh, too internally with, with our conversation with a customer. I would like to hand over to Christian, because we would like to talk to you about a couple of customer stories. So. And Sasha is already on stage. I know we extended <laughs> too much the space-time continuum. I'm going to skip yes. one, customer present, uh, one customer pitch, but Allow me just to show one about how Electra Bell, what digital means for Electra Bell. So I'm going to skip SafeNet. We're going to show it on the booth, but very happy to show Electra Bell. So first of all, it's about a multi-omni-channel experience, but it's also a combination of the forces of... Uh... Oh, it's already playing. I'm shutting up. Check that mic, boy. Weet u waar al uw energie naartoe gaat? Met de Smart Energy Box van Electrabel controleert u uw elektrische toestellen en hun verbruik, zelfs van op afstand. De Smart Energy Box. Ga slimmer om met energie. It's a great example of combination of Internet of Things, mobile and social. With that, I'm done. Thank you, Sasha. Thank you so much. Thank you. So what have you done at Safeway? At Safeway, also a very cool story, because Safeway, uh, they only know the customer when they leave the store, when they're paying. Yep. And the idea is, why shouldn't I know the customer beforehand? Why shouldn't I personalize the experience, how the customer buys? Why shouldn't I also give him a way to well, know what he previously uh, uh, did purchase and what he perhaps might want to purchase. And also, 
very, very cool because they also include pricing of, of the competition, so other attributes to personalize the shopping experience of each individual, of each identity. And you can see this at the booth, as you mentioned. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.